eco-friendly families and eco-friendly homes. When you walked in, there's a couple tables, and I just wanted to point out what's up there. So the first thing is a CSA list. So if you're not familiar with CSAs, CSAs are just local farms that you can buy a share in or share a share. Um, some CSAs allow you to work on the farm. Um, some have teamed up with the milk company, so they'll come and deliver your vegetables. A lot of people think it's just vegetables, but our, we have about 16 CSAs now. Um, some are doing mushrooms, some are doing wine, some do flowers. Um, so it's a pretty comprehensive list. Um, we have to update it because there's two new ones and then Grant Family Farms went out of business. So um, they're no longer on the list. We also have a list of local restaurants that use CSAs and use um, food from local ranchers that are um, free range and grass fed. <coughs> Um, and the reason we put that list together is sometimes it's more expensive to buy meat from a small rancher or small farmer rather than big commodity meat or commodity produce. So by going to those restaurants, you could offset their costs. Um, then we have a little nice little laminated card with the Dirty Dozen. I think most people are familiar with that. There's a commercial about it now. It's basically um, statistically the fruits and vegetables that have the most insecticides and pesticides. So those are the ones if you can afford to buy organic that you want to concentrate on. Um, then there's a sticker stickler, and it basically just tells you what those little PLU numbers are. So when you're going through the grocery store, there's like a five or a six or an eight. The easiest thing to remember is hate eight. Eight is all genetically modified. So even if it's not labeled, if you know what those numbers are, that helps. Um, and then there's all the educational um, programs we have going on, mindful movie series. We have corporate training series. They're all free at the city. Um, there's challenges that happen every other month. Um, basically, it's just a little pledge card, and people try to do um, different activities related to sustainability. So one month, we might do energy, alternative transportation. And then at the end of the month, people get put their names put in a drawing. And then collectively, we figure out you know, how much greenhouse gas we saved or money we saved. We did it for a bike to work day. So at the city, when we calculated it all up, city workers lost 89 pounds that day just by riding their bikes. So we get to see how, how much you know, the collective helps. Um, there's a green label primer. So that's, all, that's a list of all the little certifications you see and what they mean. And then eco-driving tips, different ways you can drive to save fuel, and different things you could do, like when do you open the windows, when do you use your AC. So it's a little cheat sheet you can put in your car. And then the last thing is the green energy program. So the city has a wind program that for $10 extra a month, you can get probably 90% of your uh, electricity from wind. You buy them in blocks of 500 kilowatts, and most families use about 600. So it's $10 over what your bill would be, but it's a good thing for the community. So I'm going to start out with um, not just your physical health, but your mental health. And so there's been these studies. There, has anybody ever read Thriving in the Blue Zone? OK, it's a book based on this longitudinal study about where people live the longest. So there's these blue zones all around the world, and that's the people that have the um, highest longevity. So then another um, psychologist came along and went to those places. And what he was trying to study is, where are people the happiest? And it correlated that the people that were living longest were also these people that were very happy. And the reason I was really interested in it is because those same places are very em environmentally conscientious. So tonight I'm going to talk about the choices you make, how they can not only make you healthy, but they'll make you happier. So here's my little quiz. So who can guess? Denmark. Denmark is one. Who said that? OK. Your family's styling. You're getting a nice, do you know what this is? Uh, it's probably a uh, tension ball. No. It's a dryer ball. You basically put it in your dryer, and it, um, it, it declumps your clothes so they dry a lot faster. Well, thank you. They're a really great investment. All right, two more. <laughs> Pete's seen this now. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So Pete gets this great, it's a bamboo renewable resource. 
recycled plastic head um, dish scrubber. Okay, one more. Okay, so we have Denmark, Costa Rica. It's kind of a standalone place. There's a hint. Iceland. Yeah. <laughs> you can have two prizes. <laughs> All right, so those are all the happiest countries. Um, you notice the United States isn't up there. The United States is 20th. So, but the reason I think this is really interesting, with the exception of Mexico, these are leaders, really, in the environmental um, protection uh, arena that I live in. I don't want to throw this one. This is really nice if you haven't seen them. These are bike lights that you can um, hook up to your computer to recharge them so you're not always getting new batteries. Oh, really? So the main um, parts of your house I'm going to talk about anyway is what you bring into your house, um, different indoor plants you can put in your house to help your indoor air quality, um, really rethinking what you consider clean, getting back to the basics of different things you could, different products you can use, um, how to take care of your family, how to take care of yourself, um, certain things to put in your garden, and then energy choices. So one of the big contaminants inside most people's homes are VOCs. So VOCs, volatile organic compounds, that's basically the new car smell, if you get a new car and it's that odor. And so VOCs, um, most people don't realize the effects of it, but a lot of asthma, it exasperates asthma, it fatigues people. So one of the best things you could do is, um, especially if you're painting, buy low or no VOC paint. It used to be a lot more expensive, but now you can buy it at Home Depot. Um, it's come down a lot in the last five years. The other things to think about are um, antibacterial products and what's in those products. So a lot of times when you get a product, say you want an antibacterial soap, there's antibacterials that you can get from nature, and then there's synthetics. So synthetic antibacterials, one of the things they have in them are triclosan, which is basically is getting into our waterways and it's really affecting wildlife. Another thing to think about is artificial fragrances. So a lot of people have candles or they get incense or they have sprays and look if you have the Glade or whatever you have in your house, if it has toluene in it, that's, that's one of the products you wanna avoid. So basically, toluene is a neurotoxin, so it affects your brain, your liver, your kidneys. So, the, uh, so some of the um, products that you can put in your house to sort of counteract it, because even if you aren't painting, I mean, in this room alone, any kind of part, like this stage is VOCs, uh, adhesives on the carpet are VOCs, so it's not just paint, it's not just things you bring in, it's things that are already probably in your home or your office. So some of the ways you can counteract that is um, aloe plants are really good for formaldehyde. So if you um, say you're wallpapering, that's a really good time to have aloe or put aloe in that room. Um, peace lilies are really good um, about taking in carbon monoxide, bioeffluence, or benzene. So if you happen to be an um, automotive um, person or uh, you work a lot in your garage, peace lilies are a great um, plant to get. And then the last one, uh, date palms and spider plants are really good to get rid of VOCs. So a lot of times what happens if somebody has a child, they want to decorate the nursery and they paint it, not realizing they're really um, you know, exposing their child. And um, kids are really much more, um, get much more affected because they have smaller airways. So and what's the deal with computer screens? So computer screens give off VOCs too the plastic in them, and especially when they heat up, or if they're old, like you have that one you know, down in the garage or you know, in the spare room that's been around for a while. Um, it starts to, you know, with the sun exposure, it starts to just disintegrate a little. Um, also, household cleaners. Um, there's, there are a lot of products that you want to avoid in household cleaners. The big ones are naphtha, APE, or phosphates. So some directly affect your health and some affect the health of the environment. So things to really steer clear of are naphtha and APE. Those are, those are linked to um, nervous system, depressants, and also breast cancer. And the last one is phosphates. So phosphates 
is what causes algae blooms. So a lot of uh, laundry detergent phased out phosphates, but they haven't phased them out of um, dishwasher and hand detergent. So what can you use instead? So here are some great recipes, back to the basics. Um, disinfectants, like an all-around disinfectant. Um, there's recipe books out um, on the table, and when Mary Pat talks about the Healthy Home Program, they have a lot of ideas when they go, go into your home to um, give you as alternatives. Um, a great oil, a great essential oil is tea tree. So tea tree is an antifungal and an antibacterial. So you just get a little tiny bottle of tea tree and then you can put it in water and you can spray it. But that's a great, um, and it has a nice smell. That's a great alternative to synthetics. Um, also, uh, lemons. Lemons are good for furniture, wood floors, or even um, metal. Because a lot of times when people have silver or they want to po polish metal, um, they use um, synthetic cleaners. And then the last one is vinegar. So vinegar, white distilled vinegar is really good for killing bacteria and molds. And so I always wash with cold water. And so the question comes up with what about bacteria? So if you put vinegar, I put vinegar in my laundry every couple um, loads. So some other stuff in your house. Um, one of the things uh, to think about is what you clean with. So a lot of times at the store, if you go to buy uh, like washcloths or towels or even your clothes, there's, if you look on the um, label, they'll say cotton and some say wood pulp. And wool pulp is a great um, product. It's more absorbent than cotton. Um, it's about the same price, um, but it doesn't, um, stink. It's odor. It's more odor resistant. So that's a great cleaning product. Um, the other thing is lavender. So again, like the tea tree, lavender is an essential oil. So lavender has a lot of uses. It's an antidepressant. It helps people sleep and it just smells beautiful. So just having either lavender oil or getting fresh um, like sprigs of lavender, that's a great thing for your house. In my bedroom, I have um, vases near my bed and you know, I usually have flowers in them. So I just put um, lavender drops in the vase, or sometimes I put them on the pillow. And the other thing, cutting boards is a question I get asked a lot about. So how do you clean your cutting board? Um, a really good old fashioned remedy is coarse salt, and then you rub it with vinegar, and that gets in all the crevices. And then in your kitchen, the things to avoid are certain kind of plastics. So three, six, and seven are the plastics that leach out a lot. So those are the ones you don't want to buy that kind of tubware or that kind of plastic wrap. So if you look on the bottom, that little arrow, it always has the number. So some numbers are better than others, and these are the three worst ones. Um, another thing to think about are um, flame retardants. So a lot of times you'll see in kids' pajamas, flame retardant pajamas. What this is getting um, associated with is uh, developmental delays. They ban this in Europe. They haven't banned it here yet. But Europe follows the precautionary principle, which says they would rather err on the side of safety. In America, we say, oh, we'll use it until <laughs> uh, we learn otherwise. And then what happens in the United States is even when we ban something, um, they slowly phase it out. So that's why you still have carcinogenic products on the shelves in our stores. Um, another thing <laughs> a lot of people don't realize is that when they ban like a pesticide in America, they can still sell it for 10 years abroad. So what happens is we just ship it abroad and they put it on the food and we import the food. And so, you know, it's not a, a perfect system. And so that's another reason why buying local produce is really much better for your family or growing it yourself. So one of the ones that they've proven is carcinogenic but still is on the shelves are certain dyes. So. Um, blue one and green three, what you mostly see it in is mouthwash. So when you get your mouthwash, you just get the white mouthwash. Um, if you're trying to preserve foods or you're looking for foods that don't have a lot of um, synthetic um, preservatives, these are the natural preservatives that are safer. And then another, another thing about plastic is um, this is, again, not an acute but a long-term effect, is a lot of people when they you know, get their house, or their renting house, they buy a plastic shower curtain. So what happens with those shower curtains in the long run is they end up in the landfill and then they start to disintegrate and they're, they are the ones causing endocrine disruptors. So those are the, all the things you hear about, you know, all the hormones and more people getting breast cancers. 
And so one of the alternatives you can do is there's a mold resistant hemp shower curtain. It looks like cotton, but it, do, you know, it doesn't drip, so that's a great alternative. You know, uh, there's a great store in town, Green Logic, on Linden Street. And if they don't have a product, they're really um, amazing about ordering things for you. Um, you can buy things online as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like the dryer balls, they sell at King Supers now. So um, Whole Foods, although they're expensive, um, they have some. I think Green Logic is probably the best um, store in town. Um, the other thing is these are just sort of my miscellaneous. I didn't know where to put them. But uh, in terms of your yard and your lawn, a great thing to think about is what kind of grass you plant or if you're gonna take up some part of your yard, what kind of grass to replant. Um, buffalo grass is a great native prairie grass. It does well in clay, it does well in full sun. Um, something I'm hoping everybody's starting to think about is their gardens. And I'm a big gardener, um, but we are in a drought and we are gonna have water restrictions. So if you're planting your seeds now, um, these are some drought tolerant vegetables. These are vegetables that use the least amount of water. So, so you don't plant, you know, corn and plant some things that are going to require a lot of water and then you're not going to have a lot of water so you don't get frustrated. You might want to, if you like these vegetables, you might want to think about these this year in your garden. Um, and then the last thing is your energy choices. So I mentioned the city has a green energy program, a wind program. There's also solar rebates. There's residential rebates right now. There are uh, commercial rebates for solar. There's also, and maybe James will talk about it when he comes up, there's also companies where you can lease the solar panels from them called Solar City. And I'm sure Peter in the back could tell you a lot more. And then the last two are um, take advantage of the home audits and the water audits. So the home audit is a subsidized audit. It would usually cost you about $200, but it costs you $60. Um, and the water audit is free. So the city will come out um, and they'll inspect if you have an uh, underground sprinkler system. They'll come out and make sure you don't have a leak. Or they'll look at your zones and try to help you rezone so you're not using um, too much water. Um, that program. Um, gets a, a wait list by May. So if you're thinking about it now, it's a great time. They'll start taking names. Um, so one of the reasons I, was, I always am trying to push the wind program and solar is people don't realize that, you know, when you're saving electricity, you're also saving our air. So there's a lot of co-benefits with um, energy reductions and um, safer air levels. So back in 2011, um, the city calculates out how much we save by energy conservation programs or rebates we have. And so basically we saved uh, 217,000 megawatts of electricity. And besides the greenhouse gases that come from avoiding that electricity, there's also these recognized air pollutants, so the NOx and SOx and carbon monoxide. So these are the, those are the um, contaminants or pollutants that cause ground level ozone. And those are the contaminants that really exasper exacerbate when people have allergies. So, you know, if you're trying to make a decision, say, is it worth $10 to get, you know, get the wind program? If you have someone in your house with a respiratory program, that's just one great reason to spend the $10. You'd probably spend it on medication. And uh, the other thing is to you know, be proactive and think about your garden and what you plant besides the drought tolerant. Um, if there's somebody in your family with an ailment or you have an ailment yourself, think about planning for something that's going on in your life. If you have bad cholesterol, pumpkin seeds are an amazing natural um, tonic. And so these are just you know, a few things I picked. Um, but. Uh, aloe vera is a great one for sunburn. That's a good summer plant, drought tolerant. And you know, the big point is you have all these choices and I know like I, <laughs> probably half of my slides were about chemicals that you know, um, could be toxic, but I just wanna leave you with the idea that you know, your choices can you know, either affect your health positively or negatively. Um, but you know, don't, I mean, don't lose any sleep about it tonight when you go home. I mean, we all do the best we can and you just try to learn a little more.
And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mary Pat. Hi, I'm Mary Pat Ardrip, and I'm the program coordinator for the new Healthy Sustainable Homes program that's provided by the city of Fort Collins. And this program came about um, as a result of the Keep Fort Collins Great tax uh, that was passed a couple of years ago. And the Healthy Sustainable Homes program is one of the many things that um, your tax dollars is providing for the city. Healthy Sustainable Homes is a, um, it's a, a free volunteer driven program. And it's built on the premise that um, many, many studies in the early 2000s from every alphabet in the federal government, the CDC, the NIH, the EPA, uh, HUD, and a variety of other ones really came together and started to, to look at um, indoor air quality and how critical indoor air quality is to people's health. And they found that um, U.S. citizens spend between 65 and 90 percent of their time indoors. And children spend 90 percent of their time indoors. And the indoor air quality, I just was on a conference call last week with the EPA, they're now using um, 100 percent worse than outdoor air quality. I'm saying between 70 and 100 percent worse. Um, because of the, uh, a lot of the new green building actually precludes your house from breathing and, and having proper ventilation. But also some of the older homes really provide a lot of um, problems in terms of your indoor air quality. And so, um, you know, it's, it's very ironic that citizens are actually at the greatest risk in the, in the area that they have the most control over. Um, so what we're trying to do is educate people about how they can take control of their homes and make their homes and make their lives much healthier. Studies that were conducted, oh, and I wanted to also mention to you that the city of Fort Collins, many of you have probably participated in a survey that's been conducted, um, I think it's every three years, um, to monitor the air quality of Fort Collins. One of the um, pieces of that is we're monitoring indoor air quality and interestingly enough in this robust very energetic, very healthy community, Fort Collins, Colorado, one in four families um, report that they have a family member with respiratory problems. And so that's another reason why the city council and, um, and our, our leadership team have decided that this is a, a worthwhile project for us to pursue. So the Surgeon General in 2009 put out a call to action to communities to begin to address these issues and targeted interventions to reduce or eliminate a variety of health-related issues in, inside. This, and, and so this program's a response to all of those statistics, and we really want to just create awareness to help people improve their lives and their quality of life. And, and you know, it's interesting, some of the assessments we've been out on um, have simply been, uh, we, we target, uh, at this point, we're targeting um, Anyone who is within the parameters of the city of Fort Collins is eligible to have your home assessed. Um, but we are focusing on the elderly population and we are focusing on homes who have children with asthma um, to try and really get in and, and make a difference in those homes. We, uh, the program's free and we provide uh, a training for adult volunteers and this is my plug for the evening. Um, we, we provide a 20-hour, very in-depth training to help volunteers learn about the home as a system. And you learn everything from biological contaminants um, to chemical contaminants to safety issues. We, um, we address drainage issues. We address mold and moisture problems. And so by the time you finish up with this 20-hour um, training, um, you're pretty skilled at trying to uh, walk into a home and play house detective and find those problems that are, that are really keeping people down and give them low cost or no cost suggestions on how to improve the health of their home. Um, after volunteers go through our training, we ask them to contribute an additional 20 hours of their time um, after the training, going out and conducting assessments or doing what I'm doing this evening, which is a public presentation. Um, you know, we welcome uh, volunteers' involvement on a number of different levels. Both the home assessments and the volunteer training program are all based around what we call the Keep It um, document that was um, originally coined by the uh, Housing and Urban, Urban Development um, Federal Program. And so the, uh, uh, the program is based on, on these premises, 
We train on these premises and we also um, conduct our assessments the same way. So we want to teach people how to keep their homes dry, uh, keep it clean. Uh, we recognize that some of this is a very, are very sensitive issues when we're going into homes. We're not there to condemn or um, place judgment on anyone, but to help people gently know that there are numerous hiding places when there's a lot of clutter around for pests and rodents. Um, and, you know, we, we work with them very gently. We have training, part of our training is on um, communication skills and behavior change. And we're very sensitive to uh, cult cultural differences. And, um, you know, you just you learn a lot about how to negotiate around some of these touchy um, subjects. Um, keeping it safe. Some of the homes that we've been into, um, particularly with elderly people um, who have loose rugs or they don't have a banister um, going down their basement stairs or they, you know, there's very uh, obvious things that could be easily taken care of. Um, so we, we, we look at all the safety issues when there's young children around, you know, making sure that they have locked cabinets and locked prescriptions and do you have a plan? for your um, fire escape. And we ask them what that plan is and make them articulate that. Keeping things well ventilated. You would not believe how many homes we go into who people do not use their bathroom fans after they've showered. You should run your bathroom fan at least 20 to 30 minutes after you've, after you've showered to get that moisture out of there. Opening your windows and getting some fresh air uh, flowing through your house is very important and using your kitchen uh, fan when you're boiling water and things like that so that you're not collecting um, a lot of moisture around. Keeping things pest free. We have a number of um, uh, unique technique, not unique, but techniques that we use called in, uh, integrated pest management. So um, we're encouraging people to get rid of their RAID. Um, Decon just the past couple of weeks ago has been banned by the EPA. So we go in, in and we ask people if we can look under their sinks and we start identifying uh, products that have been banned or products that might be causing uh, a lot of uh, VOCs to be escaping into the home. Um, and then we teach them how to take care of pests without using harmful pesticides. And we're not saying don't ever use them because, you know, sometimes you have to pull out the big guns to get rid of the big problems. But try all, all of these other areas first and then, um, then pull out the pesticide guns. So um, keeping things contaminant free. Um, like I said, we look under sinks and, and we look in garages. And um, there's a lot of times, right now, uh, the majority of homes have attached garages. And so um, you're getting exhaust fumes from your cars that are coming into your home. There's, you know, a, a number of homes that we've been into, and I was guilty of this before I learned all of this information, but stockpiles of paint, um, you know, 15, 20, 25, 30 cans of paint that people are saving for touch-up, you know? And we, we talked to them about how important it is to get rid of these items that are sitting in their garage. Um, open canisters of paint and um, lubricants and gasoline. Um, all of those things are coming into your home and you're breathing those every time you open your garage door to your home. And so we, we teach people how they can contain these things and how they can dispose of them properly. And also what they can do um, in lieu of those things. And so out on the table out here is a healthy household um, cleaning recipes. And not only do we have the recipes, but we've got some comparison prices in this recipe book to show you what you're paying for Windex and what it would cost you to make a bottle of great window cleaner. Um, it's all in this book, so please help yourselves to a recipe book before you leave tonight. Keeping things well maintained. We, t we teach our volunteers that your, your assessment begins when you walk into the house or when you walk up to the house. So we're looking at walk-off mats, the, the first, one of the first things we look at. We're looking at drains um, coming out from, from your gutters and making sure that, that your home is graded away from the house so that you're not collecting pools of water every time it rains or snows or every time you water. 
Um, so we do, we do a quick inspection outside. We're looking for flaking paint. Um, you know, we're very um, sensitive to homes that are um, built before 1978, which would indicate that there's probably lead paint um, somewhere in and around that area. So we look for flaking paint. We look for popcorn ceilings. We teach people about not disturbing that, those structures. If they haven't been disturbed, then leave them alone. Um, we teach them about the value of, of HEPA filters and, and changing your uh, furnace filters on a regular basis and how to go about doing that. Um, and then one of, the, one of the other major parts of this is that we teach people about all of the various resources the City of Fort Collins offers to individuals to keep their home green. And so um, we, we call it um, our party favors. And um, every home that we go into gets um, CFL light bulbs that we'll swap out for them. Um, everyone gets a low flow shower head that we will be um, happy to change out for them if they're willing to let us do that. Every home go gets uh, three or four of these low, fo low flow um, faucet spigots that will help them conserve water. We also provide everyone with information about what's going on with um, the ramifications of the fires that we had last year and our very serious drought that we're, we're entering into. And in fact, we're having a volunteer training tomorrow night to train the volunteers on what's going to be happening with water restrictions so that they'll be better informed when they go out to do the assessments to help people understand why it's so important for everyone to cooperate with the water um, restrictions. We have a little shower timer that everybody gets. Um, any home that does not have a smoke alarm can have up to three smoke alarms uh, given to them. And then we also have a carbon monoxide detector that every home will receive. Um, and we're working um, in partnership with our utilities department as well as Poudre Fire Authority. Um, each person that we go see gets one of our recipe bottles filled up with an all-purpose cleaner because oftentimes it's just hard to get started and hard to see how, how great these things work. So we give everyone a bottle of um, all-purpose cleaner. Um, every home that we go into, is uh, we conduct a radon test. And um, we also give people a um, tire gauge so that we can teach them about the importance of keeping your tires um, at the proper, um, is it pounds? Sorry. I think it's pounds, so that um, to protect our ozone. So there's tons of information that people are left with. They get this entire packet of information. And included in this is a resource manual that if you, for example, we conduct a um, radon test and their radon comes in high, they can, they can refer to this resource list and it's got all of our local resources as it relates to air quality testing, allergy control, uh, animal control, asbestos, radon, lead, um, lung health, energy efficiency, child safety and poison information. So this is just a quick reference um, resource list for folks. We um, this year are only going to be conducting one volunteer training. We did two last year, but this year we're going to do one because we feel like it's more important for us to spend the bulk of our time uh, cultivating the fabulous volunteers that we've attracted to this program. Um, they're all folks just like you who are interested in learning and, and growing and um, participating in the community. So our one and only training this year will be start, starting on April 2nd. And again, it's a 20-hour training. There's information about this in, in, in a sign-up sheet outside if you're interested in joining us. Um, we will be um, starting on the 2nd of April and ending April 18th. We generally go two nights a week from 7, or 6.30 to 9. Um, and then we do one full day Saturday where we have the folks from National Jewish Hospital and a nationally renowned um, asthma expert come in and train us on asthma and allergies and the things that we need to look for in homes who have respiratory challenged people. And then we all go out together as a group and do some home assessments. So it's a really fun, um, <clears throat> it's a fun opportunity. We feed you. We feed you dinner every night and breakfast and lunch on Saturday. 
And um, like I said, it's a, it's a lot of like-minded people like yourselves who are participating in this program. If you are interested in having your home assessed, please um, leave your name and email and, and phone number for me out on the sign-up sheet out there. So I've got two sign-up sheets, one's for assessments, one's for the training. And I've also got posters. If any of you have uh, places at work that you would be willing to hang up a, one of our posters um, to promote the program, we would really appreciate it. So I think I've gone over my time, but thank you very much. And uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, thanks a lot, Rosemary, for having me here today and putting on this awesome program. Mary Pat, very wonderful. Thanks, you guys, for being here because without you, we, don't, we would only be talking to ourselves over and over again. So, um, so my name is James Welch Mitchell. I'm a partner at the Group Real Estate, and uh, I sell houses. I put a very big focus, and I'm very passionate about our older homes and helping those older homes to become more energy and water efficient um, because our older homes, they're the best. They have the character. They have the location. They're just not necessarily uh, so up to speed on today's standards for energy and water consumption. So um, that is a really neat thing. I'm also the um, chair of the Sustainability Committee for the Fort Collins Board of Realtors. It's a very long name, very short uh, uh, job description. I just focus on green things within the Realtor Board, and uh, nobody else does that, so that makes us quite a nice thing. Uh, it was one of the first of its kind in the nation because um, we actually became a, a committee within the board, so we thought that was pretty neat. Um, so what brings us here today is, uh, you know, it's all these different collectives, all these different pieces of a giant collective of sustainability in our houses, and even potentially going further into a more regenerative or a more renewable style of living. Um, and it's all these little pieces that, that uh, are just doing such great things in our community. You've got all sorts of different, what I call, wheels being created all over the place, and then we have these types of events to bring them all together and help everybody know what's going on out there. Home, that's what I'm here to talk about. Most of you, do me a favor, if you know how to raise your hand, raise your hand. Yeah, okay. So they're not gonna raise their hand no matter what I say. So we know that, check. Um, uh, so how many of you live in a house, right? Pretty much everybody, apartment, place like that to live. Great, that's a very important thing because our homes are awesome. Well, now, when I say home, you know, when I say, you're going home in just a little bit. I mean, think of all the thoughts that go into your mind, right? It's good feelings. What do you think of when I say home? Anybody brave enough to shout out an answer? Dogs. Dogs. Cat. Cat. Family. Family. Garage. Garage. Warm. Warm. Bed. Bed. <laughs> Toilet. All these things, right? <laughs> hey, <it's> just, <laughs> I like this game. <laughs> um, and when I ask, you know, and so whenever I'm sitting down with somebody I'm, and they're buying a house or they're going through the process, I'm saying, well, what, what are you looking for in a home? So let's pretend for a second that you're looking to buy a house. What are you looking for in a house that you buy? Bedroom. Toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Bedrooms. Kitchen. Kitchen. Bathrooms. How many? Size. Yard. Location. What doesn't hit the list until we get to about 9, 10, 11, 12? Sustainability. Sustainability. Nice, thank you. Gold star. Uh, what else doesn't hit? How efficient is my furnace? How tight is my envelope? How much insulation is in the walls? How much does it cost to run my house per month? We're all focused on this, this monthly mortgage payment, but we're not even considering our utilities bills. So we're not asking those questions. That's the interesting part about working with our older homes is because there's a whole great way to lower our total cost of ownership in this whole, this whole world, but we're not looking at it from that perspective as a general rule. Okay, so that, that to me strikes uh, the chord for opportunity. Um, let's see, uh, great, next slide, value. Okay, so let's say that for, for example, uh, how many of you done any, any green or sustainable retrofits to your house? Okay, awesome. You're a great group because you're, you're the people that are going to try this stuff out. So let's say, for example, that you've got a nice 96% uh, efficient furnace in your house and your neighbor doesn't, you're both going to sell. All things equal, whose house should sell for more money? The one with the high efficient furnace or the one without it? With, with right? Do you think that's the case right now? Not necessarily. What about insulation? If you've got 
if you've got the whole tight energy package, and you know, let's, let's take this to Old Town, say you're down on Mountain Avenue, you've got two 1900 houses, one's been energy retrofitted, and it only costs you 100 bucks a month for all utilities, and one is the still classic 1900 that hasn't done anything to it. They're both listed at the same price. They're both going to appraise for the same price. So it, it's an interesting thing about value, because in our market, we just don't have the information and the data to do this. How many of you are aware that there is a thing out there called an MLS or multiple listing service for real estate? Okay, so what that does is that is the place where as a realtor I can go on there and I can put in all, I can put in the houses that I'm selling, that's also where I look for houses for sale. You have to be a realtor and pay this membership to do it, otherwise you got to go to whatever millions of websites are out there that help you find houses. Okay, on this MLS, how many of you are aware that there's a thing called the green features addendum? We got one. Love it, right? How, so if you've done these items to your house, do you wanna do you wanna tell potential buyers about it? Do you wanna tell the market that you deserve a higher value for the things that you've done to your house? So riddle me this. Last year, Fort Collins, Green Features has been around for, for like eight months already, you know, and so in all of 2012 and all of the houses in Fort Collins that got sold, new and existing, there's Gosh, I should know this number since I'm going to ask you for one, but let's say for the sake of argument that there's, you know, 5,000 houses that sell in Fort Collins last year. How many of those do you think filled out a green features addendum? Two. I wish, that was in Greeley, close. <laughs> 600, right? 600 actually filled out a green features addendum. I mean, and, and that was on the high end of things, you know, and that's, it's a very low percentage in the whole, in the whole grand scheme of things. And, and you know that people, I mean, in, in, on this green features addendum, these are the items that we're tracking. Third party ratings, who's, you know, if you bought a new house and it's LEED certified or it's US you know, Green Building Council or it's Energy Star certified. So those types of things can go on there. Uh, construction type, if there's, you know, any sort of neat things like straw bale, SIPs panels, uh, things of that nature. Um, heating, cooling, ventilation, that's where you're going to find your high efficiency furnace, your high efficiency air conditioner. People have these things. One of my favorites on there, by the way, is a programmable thermostat. If you have a programmable thermostat, you can put that on there. If you have a radon system, indoor, indoor air quality is huge on that list as well. There's actually an Energy Star rating for indoor air quality now. It's neat. Okay, So we're all understanding. The whole house is a package and system. So if you've done these things to your house, then that's what we need, is when people are going ahead and they're selling their houses, we need them to fill out this form. Because the second you fill out this form, it gets put in the system, it gets tracked, appraisers can look at it, and they can compare apples to apples, which house has what, and then they can determine what these values are. Because right now, if you have a solar system on your house, there's really the, there is a value for it, right? We all agree there's a value for having a solar system on the top of your house, okay? But you're also the choir that I'm here preaching to. So uh, we get it, but you know who doesn't necessarily get it are appraisers, the people that actually value the house. Now, if you're willing to pay 20000 extra bucks for a solar system, but an appraiser says, well, I don't understand, there's no value in that, well, the bank's not going to give you a loan for that amount. So then we're all up the same, we're all in the same place without getting exactly what we want, right? So I encourage you, for you and your friends, anytime somebody's talking about, oh, I'm selling my house, and you know they've done anything, just tell them, oh, by the way, did you know that you can get credit for all of these upgrades that you've done. Okay? The more information we get and the longer we get this information, the better we can actually uh, um, assign values and return on investments for these types of things. Because we're doing great work here in this town, people. We're just not necessarily talking about it in this regard. Um, I went backwards. Why did anybody tell me that? I blame you. Um, uh, let's see. And even Energy Star appliances. I mean, la ladies and gentlemen, this list is very simple. You know, so just fill it out. So where, where do you access that? What's that? Oh, I mean, how do you assign this to your house? How do you assign what, excuse me? Well, these things that you have, you know. So let me ask, have you done any energy upgrades to your house? Well, it's not a programmable thermostat. Great, right? So what you do is when you fill out the form, there's a little box, you check it next to program. Okay, where's this form? Where's this form? Well, you get it from either online or your realtor when you go to sell it. It's a disclosure that we put out from, it's a standard Colorado Real Estate Commission approved disclosure 
that you get when you fill it out. If, you, if any of you have bought and sold houses recently, you've probably seen a seller's property disclosure. The seller discloses all of their information about what they know about the house. Was there water damage? How old is the roof? What kind of the appliances are in there? Do they work? Does the landscape, all this stuff, right? So the green feature is just an extension of that form, okay? Um, and by the way, in this whole uh, grand scheme of buying houses, and we were talking about back there last night, you know, uh, we all familiar that you get a home inspection when you buy a house? You know, what are they looking for when you get a home inspection? Mice. Mice. Radon. Yeah. They're looking for radon, right? That's a good one. That, that works, right? They're looking for cracks in the foundation, looking for loose toilets, water damage. They're looking for all the big things. They're looking for the bones of a house. You know what they're not looking for, typically speaking? Insulation. They're not looking for the actual performance of the house. So uh, there are ways to do this, and there are ways to, um, in the process of buying the house, to actually do these upgrades. Say you're buying a house and you know it's in good shape, but you know it's old. We all know old houses leak, right? So while you're buying the house, why not go ahead and get a special home loan that's going to allow you to finance those energy improvements in there so you can do it before you even move into the house. So all you do is move in and be happy. So I'll do my one quick shameless plug, and I will introduce Renewablu. Congratulations. I'll be very excited to tell you that you are the first people that I have introduced this to in a public setting, and I'm very excited about it. It's been a project I've been working on for a very long time. Thank you. What we aim to do is, you guys know that, that room in your house tonight that's going to be cold no matter what your thermostat's at? In the summertime, that room that's hot no matter what your thermostat's at? You know, and the indoor air quality issues that you have and the asthma that you're feeling? That's what Renewablu does. Is we, are the re we are the response to this energy efficiency and green home movement from the standpoint of a trusted real estate advisor. What we aim to do is be that last piece of the puzzle that puts all of these different aspects together and helps you, helps guide you through the process to actually make these improvements to your home, make sure that they work properly, and then at the end of the day, hopefully you still like us and use us to sell it so we can actually use uh, the green features addendum to properly market the value of these things. I think it's very important, Fort Collins in Northern Colorado has this very unique opportunity to be one of the central places in our country that helps assign value to these types of upgrades to the house. It's a total cost of ownership. It's not just what's your mortgage, it's how much does it cost you to live there. So with that, I believe my 10 minutes is up. I will offer you many thanks. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you today. There's a whole lot of great things going on in this town. I encourage you to tap into at least a couple of them and really do look at your house. It's, not, it's a very simple process to just go in and at least add some insulation. A little insulation goes a long way. I'll leave you with that. Thank you. So hi. Um, this has been fun. We've enjoyed I've gotten some lots of tips and I'm really enjoying this. So we'd like to share a few of our tips that we've kind of thought up and and we moved here five years ago. We retired and we purchased a um, 15 year old house at that point. Um, we have propane uh, heating and the stove was propane and we really wanted to, we've made a personal challenge that every which way we can we try to convert to, to a renewable energy rather than, than those that are not renewable. And then every time we can come up with something that is more sustainable and, and that sort of thing. So these are some of our ideas. So what we're going to show you is our outside, things we've done to the outside of the house, and things we've done in the garden and that sort of thing. So just tips that we've come up with and we're trying to think of new ones every day. So one of the first things we did was 20 months ago, we went ahead and went ahead and did photovoltaic of big system. Um, so this is on our barn because our barn had the perfect facing. It faced south. Our house did not, but it, our barn already had electric, so it was just fine. So anyway, we have uh, 33 photovoltaic panels on our barn. And then just thought you might be interested. These are the inverters that uh, are in the barn also, and that converts it from the DC power, which is produced by the panels, to AC, which is what you need to run your resident, your residence. And I have the um, I have the information here that that if anybody's interested, it's the it's the cost uh, factors, uh, what it costs. But uh, in terms of the panels. 30% of that cost is a tax credit, a, a federal tax credit, 30%, right off the top. So you have to pay that, but then you don't, you get that money, uh, you get a credit for that money against your taxes 
for up to five years. So you don't have to take it right away. You can take it up to five years. So it's really a really good deal. Plus, in that system, the governor had four, the governor's uh, pot of money had four thousand five hundred dollars, which came right off the top. I mean, they, they just gave it to us, and we turned it into the company. So a about two thirds, we paid for about two thirds of the system, and about a third of it was either the governor's money or, uh, uh, you know, the federal tax credit. So it's a pretty good deal. Right. The money our money. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Thank you. We really appreciate it. <laughs> so, anyway, that's the inverters. And this is a really cool program. The company that installed uh, our system gave us something called e gauge. And it's online. This is just a, a you know, this is a, a screen capture. But this is a program that is updated second by second to a, to a server somewhere, I think in Boulder. And at any point in time, we can look at this program, even if we're on vacation. And we know exactly how much uh, energy we're producing and using. So. I can tell you a little bit about it later, but anyway, the green is production. So that's what we're producing. Red is what we're using. And so when you have, we have a lovely, lovely blue sky day with bright sun and, and all that sort of thing, we have a perfect bell curve. This was a cloud. <laughs> That was cloud cover that came over. So you can see for the solar, it, you know, you really, if you have a cloudy day, boy, do you lose production. But, and, and of course, this is uh, around 8 o'clock is when we start producing. And then we go to, well, I don't, I, right now I have this set for a 12-hour period. And then, I don't know if you can read this in the back, but I went ahead and, and backed this up to February 18th because I wanted to give you uh, we haven't had a lot of sun the last couple of days, so I didn't want to. Sh I wanted to show you a day when we were doing some good production uh, of electricity, um, and then it's very interesting with this program. You can put, I forget what it's called, but you can put uh, isolated uh, circuits in. So this actually tells us what's being produced in our in our garage. So you can actually segment it out so that you can find out in terms of when you're what how much you're using you can segment it out it was very interesting this little green blip here happen we're on well water it happens to be our um, pump for the well water and we didn't know it. we had a leak and we were expending all kinds of uh, money pumping water we didn't need to be pumping and wasting our precious resource so we were able to find out from this that we don't have it now but because we fixed it but we had a leak and we were just oozing all kinds of water and uh, wasting burning up the pump as well so it's really pretty cool so the next one i'm going to show you is um i went <laughs> i went ahead and said give me one year so you can see um, in July when we hit that 105, you can see how our, we spiked here in terms of energy uses. And then you can see here where we've had these really cold and, and you know, been more gray days, uh, we really utilized a lot more energy. But the really cool thing is up here, it tells us exactly we used, uh, I can't even read it, well, I guess I can read it from here. We used 18.4 megawatts megawatts uh, for the year that equated to fifteen hundred and thirty six dollars we generated twelve point five megawatts which equated to a thousand forty three so um, the net that we actually uh, bought was uh, about about close to five hundred dollars worth of energy so we produced over the last year two-thirds of our energy so we feel good about that <laughs> well, we love this program. It's really handy. Okay, so in addition to the photovoltaic, we went ahead and did the, the, the uh, hot water. So this is solar thermal. So that's a regular hot water heater for about 40, 60 gallons. And then this is the, the tank, the holding tank, uh, where the hot water comes in and then through fins, it takes, uh, there's, it, it, 
uh, transfers the heat to the water. And this is a backup. It only goes to the electric hot water heater if this is not at, a, at the correct temperature. So that's kind of how it runs. That's the uh, equipment that runs. The, that's all in the basement. Um, so the next thing we did when we bought the house, we were really thrilled. It had this passive solar feature. This is facing south, full eight or more windows facing south into our living room. So on a winter day, I think today, we, with all the heat off, just with, with the nice sunny day, we were running 76 degrees in our living room with no heat. So we pretty much use the, 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 this during the day and have blinds we either put up or down. To, if it's too hot, we put some blinds up and put them down, that sort of thing. I took this yesterday when it was gray, but that was coming in. And then we have a pellet stove in the corner of the living room, and that's what we start in the evening. When the sun goes down, we supplement with the pellet stove. So we've pretty much gotten off of propane entirely for, uh, for heating the house, which we're really thrilled about. So just another idea, what we have is um, we bought these from Ikea six years ago. I'm sure there's other, I don't have any stock in Ikea. It's just a, a, a source. And what you do with these is, this is furniture, and you buy the base. I keep doing that. You buy the base, and then you buy the slip cover that looks upholstered to go with it. And this chair probably has eight different kinds of, of, of covers that go with it. And we've had this six years now, and that's been washed probably 20 times. So I could take the whole thing off, take it down, wash it, and put it back on. So what we really like about that, there's less furniture. That's, and um, I can no longer buy this cover. It's six years old. But there's probably eight different kinds of covers I can buy for that chair. So through the years, I'm not going to be putting the base in the landfill or anything else. Maybe the covers will wear out. But I, it just makes sense. It's very sustainable because you're not you can change your furniture without having to really, um, you know, it's more sustainable because you're just changing the cover. And it's reasonably priced. So uh, we're, we're gardeners, and more and more we want to grow our own foods. We grow organically. Um, so this is our garden from last year. We have llamas. And um, so we're composting, of course. We have our compost here, double compost. This was uh, potatoes, onions, uh, uh, strawberries, and some, some asparagus there. And um, so, so we actually utilize, uh, I have a sample of it if anybody's interested. It's a 30% white shade cloth. We put it over a structure, and this, this protects from hail, but the 30% shade is actually, in our intense sun, is actually better for the plants, especially when we hit 105 this past summer. My plants that were not under it did not do anywhere near as well as the ones that were under it. So it gives it, it cools it down a little bit, and uh, it, it's not too bad uh, price-wise. And then this is our Lamadu pile we compost and every year in the fall we amend that right in the soil and we happen to have a, tra a tractor and we we amend it in and so our main compost is uh, from our llamas the llama do is if for those of you that know the MPK is, is as good as bat guano so it's really really good um, type of compost then these are our structures that we utilize um, these it's like Tinker Toys. You can buy these little connectors from Farm Tech. They're like $5 a piece. And then these pipes uh, are just chain link fence piping from um, Home Depot. And then you can make them larger, smaller, bigger, however you want to. Uh, and then we are able to put our cover on top of it, and we're able to trellis up to it. And um, we really like that, mostly for the hail. How many, how many of you have gardens that got wiped out in the hail? Yeah. Not too much fun, is it? So the cloth is really, I, we think, a good, we spent one year every summer, I don't know what you guys do, but you know, we'd watch the, watch the weather and then go and throw shade cloths over in the afternoon, and then we'd take them back off. 
And we said, this has got to be a better way to do it. So we just leave this on so we're not worried about the hail. Does the sun deteriorate that? Pardon me? Does the sun deteriorate that? Um, not really. You have to look. It's plastic. It's kind of a plastic. How does it do against snow? How does it do what? Oh, we take it down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do we put it? We put it on with something called wiggle wire, but I can, I can talk to you. It's for, also from Farm Tech. It's a channel, and then it has this wire that's kind of a wiggle, and so you just, uh, it's really easy to put on and take off. Um, just Google it. There's different sources. We happen to have bought this one from the Mega Greenhouse. It's online, and it was, um, gosh, I can't remember, it was $40 for maybe a 30-foot run. That's 12 feet, I think about 10 feet wide. It, it really is pretty. White shade cloth. Yeah, so just Google white shade cloth, and you'll, you'll find the different sources. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, we've been actually gardening we grew for farmers markets for a while, so we, we've been growing for about eight years now. And one of the things we do, because we really do feel strongly about conserving uh, water and sustainable growing and all that sort of thing. So one of the things that we, we utilize is besides raised beds, we use this drip tape, which I have a sample of if anybody's interested. It has little, um, little slits in it ever so often. It's, it's a little, it stands up a little bit better than the soaker hose because it doesn't clog like the soaker hose would tend to. Um, but you, we water with that and, it, and it's on a, um, every row is connected to a header. And so we just have to turn it on in one spot and then it waters all the rows. But the most important thing is we use this um, plastic woven matting. And we used to have to order it, but right now, but it's available at Home Depot. It's, it comes about six feet wide, and I forget what the, I think maybe a hundred foot lengths, so you might want to share it with neighbors or something. But I think it has over a 10 year uh, lifespan. And the beauty of it is it is woven, so it, it, lets, um, it lets the air in, it lets the water in, but it conserves the water when you do, uh, when you actually do water because uh, we probably water only half as much as other people that have their gardens open to the air. Because when, with this combination of the soaker hose, the, I mean the, the drip tape, which is a slow kind of soaking process, and this over top of it, it really, really keeps the, the water in, which is critical in these drought times. Mm -hmm. Oh, it keeps the weeds down, yeah. <laughs> That's what we love it. As you can see, you, it's really easy to cut, so you just cut your holes in the middle, you just cut them with scissors, and then you just plant right there in the middle. And I, I know so many people that it, complain about weeding, and I go, we don't weed all summer. Once in a while, something will pop up in the middle there, um, but we don't weed. And let me see, let me go back. Wait. Okay, so you can see how we've done this. We even, we even put the plastic over the paths. So there's plastic on the rows, and then we have the solid paths in there as well. And the most important thing is um, you can get these at uh, Home Depot. Um, that's how we put it in the ground. Otherwise, the wind really will pull it out pretty badly. Um, but that's how we secure it into the ground, about every three, four feet down the rows on both sides. And of course, with the paths, you can, you can overlay those, so you don't have to do it. You, you can double up on it. But that was critical. <laughs> Before we figured this out, there, we'd have wind and we'd be out there in the middle of a windstorm trying to, you know, this was just ready to fly off like a kite, and we were, it was crazy. So, in, in addition to that, again, our, our challenge was to get off of propane. And we have, because uh, we have a propane stove still, um, one of the things we, uh, we made a purchase was our solar oven this summer. And we're really trying to, to cook and bake more of our own foods. And frankly, I don't feel like 
baking anything in the summer. So this, the solar oven just made so much sense to me. It's off, it's renewable energy, it's off of propane, and you can bake in the summer outside instead of making your house all hot. So um, we purchased this, happened to be on Amazon, but you can get it just about anywhere. Um, and then there's lots of books on solar. You can also take it camping, uh, solar cooking, but you can do chicken in there. It gets up to 400 degrees. Um, it's pretty amazing. And I, I, we bought it late in the summer and I did a zucchini bread and it was great. It browned and everything. And, and the only thing you have to do is you can't like go, go away for hours. You have to, you have to kind of track it because it has to be, uh, you have to manually track it so that it's kind of really at a direct, uh, you know, path to the sun to get maximum heat out of it. And then the last thing we've done is just in our, in our quest is uh, our solar lantern. I understand you guys in Fort Collins, because we're in the port, uh, we have a few more power outages than you do, evidently. <laughs> Not a lot, but we have some. And so this made sense to us. We keep this, uh, we keep this uh, uh, you know, um, primed up uh, in the sun every day. It has two different sets of LED lighting. Um, in addition to that, it has a hang hand crank. If you ever don't have a sunny day, you can crank it. And you can, also, um, you can also recharge it to the car. So it would be good for camping and that sort of thing. But we use it, we have them ready. Uh, or if we go out at night to the barn or something like that uh, to see the animals, we can take it with us. And um, it just makes sense. Plus, you're not burning candles. <laughs> so it's less dangerous than having you know, candles and that sort of thing. So anyway, that's, that's our presentation. And yeah. 30% means it's, 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 uh, it's cutting out 30% of the, the solar. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. A lot, um, and that's because you get that with this because it's white. If it were black, of course, you would be getting um, much, you would getting, you'd be getting more shade. And another factor is how close the, the weave is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It, as a matter of fact, if you see the construction projects where they'll have like a little fence up around that has this thing that's kind of vertical, that's a wind barrier, that sort of thing, that's very similar to this, but it's not as wide, as, you know, as this. Weed block, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So they, yeah, they. We've purchased it before online, and we can get two foot wide, three feet wide, six feet foot wide, and Home Depot only carries the six foot, but of course you can cut it. It's not, it will fray a little bit if you do cut it. Otherwise, when it comes, it's got a nice seam to it, so it doesn't fray. But this, is, this one is pretty used. We probably use this three, four, or five years. And we do take them up in the winter. We don't leave them out, because it's just going to deteriorate a little bit more. When you start, when you start c c uh, growing your own food and trying to cook your own things, it is a lot of work. It, it is a lot of work, but I think well, we're retired, so that helps. <laughs> where, do you, um, where do you sell your food? Oh, we were, we were selling at uh, the Old Town Market. Yeah, yeah, but we're, we're retiring from that this year, too. <laughs> so, partially because of the drought, and we have some younger farmers that, you know, or trying to get in, 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 you know, in, in, in on it. So we think we it's time for us to retire and let the younger folks. So you're not gonna garden or just oh, we're going to garden, yeah. But um, when we were going for the market, I was not canning and and um, freezing, and do, I was too busy trying to get things to the market to take the time to do that. So I'm going to grow not as much, but um, spend more time freezing and canning and that sort of thing. So at least that's the plan. <laughs> Um, we did uh, Echelon Energy, that has, it's out of Fort Collins, um, but they've changed their name to, Endurance. they're fun, they came with bicycles, you know, young guys, and they had these bicycles on their cars, you know, they were going to work, and then they were going to go ride their bikes, and, you know, cool, really nice, really nice guys. Yeah, here, you can, we can pass these around if you want to see it. Yeah, and they did a... Um, 
you know, they're, they were very professional. I don't know how many years they've been at it. Several are engineers and a lot of electricians and um, very professional in, in their actual um, estimates and, oh, endurance, I'm sorry, yeah, endurance. Solar and, and engineering, you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they were terrific. And one thing we really liked, well, it's, it's kind of minor, but um, they didn't require us to put the governor's uh, uh, rebate up front. They let us just pay our amount, and then they waited and let the governor pay them. So that was kind of nice not to have to, you know, take that money out. But any other questions? The interesting thing we found out about solar is that um, it's actually more efficient in cold weather than it is in hot weather, which is really kind of strange, but I mean, it seems a little bit. So it's actually more efficient in the, in the winter than it is in a hot summer day, which was interesting. We are actually still tied to the grid. Um, we did that for several reasons. One is that the batteries, the batteries for solar off-grid are not super uh, renewable. I mean, they're batteries, so uh, you've got to do, when those wear out, you've got issues in terms of um, how, to, how to get rid of them, recycle them, whatever. So we didn't feel like that was real sustainable. So what happens is on a daily basis, or hour to hour, if we're producing more solar than we're using, we're actually a little mini generation uh, power plant. So our, our, whatever we're producing goes out to the grid at any, any time during the day, if we're not using it. And then, so we build up a credit when it goes out, and then we use, then we, when we use it, when we're not producing enough at night, uh, then we utilized that credit that we built up. I think we had about three months this summer where our monthly bill showed that we, that we produced more than we used. That was really fun. <laughs> now, if we have a credit, we happen to do Pooter REA. I don't know how Fort Collins does, but um, if you have a credit, they don't, they don't pay us that back monthly because that doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. So they, at the end of the year, if we produced more than we used, we would get a check. That's what, yeah. It, it makes sense because, um, you know, most of us, are, well, as you can see, I mean, we have a lot of panels and it's still only two thirds of what we utilize. So, uh, what we utilize. So we're working on that. <laughs> we're trying to get that down. Well, thank you. It was fun.